try everything and do a little bit of everything that we have to offer. You know, go and taste all of the unique gumbos. Shop through our vendors, watch some of the skinny competitions and stay for the bands. But especially if you see a girl in a fur coat with a crown on, go up and talk to her. I'm sure the new queen would love to show you around the festival. Thanks for joining us on Louisiana's Playground Podcast, your roadmap to all things Lake Charles, Louisiana. I'm Brady Reynard. And I'm Jillian Quarter. And once again, we're excited to bring you the authentic stories and experiences of Southwest Louisiana with all the tools that you need to build your own personal Lake Charles itinerary. And the last show of the year on deck, episode 33 of the Louisiana's Playground Podcast, interviewing Jordan Kelly, the Louisiana Fur and Wildlife Festival Queen, as we kind of get an inside look at what it is to be a festival queen and be able to travel the state wearing a sash and a crown and representing Southwest Louisiana while doing so. We begin the show as we always do with a taste of Southwest Louisiana, a segment we call On the Eats. On V Eats is our chance to talk food here in Southwest Louisiana. On V meaning that desire, that want, and you know what we want all the time? Great food. And we found it this week at Guillory's Famous Foods. And they are Lake Charles famous. 32 years in business, family owned. The Guillory family has really been, and I know we use this term pretty often, but I mean, that's what happens when we're highlighting restaurants that have been in these spots for decades. They're a Lake Charles staple in what they offer. The Patriarch Darby Sr. opened it following in his father's footsteps. They had the business, changed it a couple times, and now we've got famous foods, and Lake Charles is all the better for it. That's right. And when we first moved to Lake Charles, this is one of the first places that people tell you to go eat. They're like, you got to try out famous foods. And Man, are we glad we go there. It's delicious. And such an interesting combination. They they have their Creole soul food. And then in addition, they do barbecue cuisine with it. They're known for their meat, stuff like boudin, sausage, hot links. And then, of course, those cracklings. It smells good before you even walk in. You park in the parking lot, you crack your door open, and boom, it hits you outside. You know how good the food is about to be. And I like, too, they have their little bit of... Um, kind of their shopping center inside of their uh, their restaurant where they you can buy their seasons that they make. They do have some of their meats that they freeze and some of their little meal kits as well. And they also have like memorabilia, one that caught my eye were little soup bowls and on the front of it, it said, gumbo is my love language. And that may or may not be your Christmas present this yeah. year. And I, so I might, I might do that to people, you know, it's like, what's your love language? Is it gifts? Is it uh, is it, it touch? No, no, it's it's gumbo. <laughs> I, I'll, you hold your compliments. I'll just take gumbo. Thank That's you. Right. Um, yeah, they have they have a little bit of everything. They make their own seasonings, sell it right there in store. They also highlight a lot of other locally made products yep. as well that goes into their food, which is awesome. As far as what we ordered, I went with the lunch plate, the two meat plate, hot link, and brisket. Let me tell you that brisket. So tender, and they have a sauce that they kind of covered a little bit of a barbecue sauce. To me, it, it was very similar to what a Jack Miller sauce is. If you're from Southwest Louisiana, you know exactly what I'm saying. It's a staple flavor here in Southwest Louisiana. Basically, it's a tangy Cajun barbecue sauce. They sell it in a bottle oftentimes, um, and it had that kind of similar tangy flavor to it. Uh, and so with the brisket, so tender, so perfect, amazing. The hot link, meanwhile, had a little bit of a spicy kick to it. It really did. And a crispy, crispy casing on it. Wonderful sausage flavor. And it is a thick bite as well. Um, you could also get it as a sandwich, which I kind of was eyeing as well. But I wanted to try the brisket too. So that's why I kind of got the both. But we're not done. The lunch plate also comes rice dressing. Baked beans, potato salad, and a roll, so you're not leaving hungry. Each of those are great. The baked beans, slightly sweet, really what you want. The rice dressing, meanwhile, I feel like it's elevated rice, but still doesn't overpower the sauce or the beans that you might eat with it. And overall, by the time you get done with all of that, you're stuffed. If you can even finish it. We took it to go play at home. I had the pulled pork sandwich, meanwhile, which is absolutely delicious. Um, it had really great flavors, 
and super tender pork, just what you're looking for when you want a sandwich. You don't want to have to work at it, right? You want to be able to just take a good bite and get everything in there. Same sauce, I think, that came on your same barbecue sauce. Really good, full of great flavor. And it's just the right amount of sauce. Sometimes you get a pulled pork sandwich from somewhere and they don't actually sauce it. You have to like dip it yourself. Or some places they kind of overdo it and it becomes a really sloppy sandwich. This was the perfect ratio sauce to meet there in that pulled pork sandwich. I also got a link of boudin. So good. Now it was spicy, but it wasn't make you hurt, eyes watering spicy. <laughs> and, um, and, and I don't do well with spice, to be honest. So even just a little bit really goes a long way with me, but it was perfect. It was just a little bit of kick at the end. The real thing about the boudin that I noticed that really separates it from other places, I think, boudin can get pretty dry sometimes inside. You know, it's a, it's a rice mixture and it can get a little dry in there. This wasn't. This was super moist. It was full of flavor. Um, delicious boudin. Yeah, and I think that that's something that's that's a good point. We kind of save the best for last, so to speak, in this restaurant review. While their meals are very good, very satisfying, I really feel like that they have made their mark in Southwest Louisiana because of their boudins and cracklins. So Jill sampled the boudin. I went with the cracklins, and they're not for the faint of heart. If you are uh, not a seasoning fan, if you don't like spice, steer away. Go to something else. This because is not your thing. This is not your thing, and that's what makes cracklins so good. And they do something really special here. They have their soft and spicy cracklins. Some people call it their wet cracklins because typically a cracklin – is that cut of pork, and most places it's a dry seasoning on top, and it's kind of a, it is a dry experience. Theirs, they kind of coat it in this, um, uh, I've been told, a special hot sauce that kind of really adds some moisture back to it, but you don't really lose anything. And so our photographer that goes with us everywhere, Catherine Shea, said, and quote, this is how cracklins should be, and I really agree with that sentiment. These are now my favorite cracklins because I love the difference of them compared to everyone else. They're so unique. They still have that crunch, ton of flavor, ton of seasoning. They're just amazing, and they are a must-try when coming to Lake Charles. And if you are visiting Lake Charles, Famous Foods is just a hop, skip, and a jump off the interstate. So it's totally worth the stop, worth the visit. It's a great atmosphere. The staff there is so nice and accommodating. They really work with you on what you want to order. You tell them kind of what you're looking for, and they'll make it happen for you. And um, it's really a great place to to stop by. You should do it. 32 years in business and still going. Yeah. And look, Cracklins, I know going back to the Cracklins again, they're the perfect road trip food as well. So if you are heading to, let's say, the Louisiana Fur and Wildlife Festival, it is perfect to go in, grab you a Ziploc baggie. That's where they come in. That's how you know they're good, too. You know it's good it when it comes, comes in, in a, a Ziploc. Zip it comes in a <laughs> Ziploc. So you can grab it. You've got about a 45-minute drive down to Cameron Parish anyway, and there's no better snack than some Cracklins there on the road. So pop in and uh, get you some of those. So stop by Famous Foods, grab yourself some cracklins, maybe some boudin too. Hey, stay for lunch, who knows, but you're going to get a great meal out of it for sure. From a great meal to a great guest, we welcome on Jordan Kelly, the 64th Louisiana Fur and Wildlife Festival Queen. She's been immersed in our sportsman paradise since she could walk, making her a natural fit for the festival crown and to promote one of Southwest Louisiana's best festival experiences. Welcome to the show, Jordan. Hi, thank y'all for having me. So Southwest Louisiana is known for big city amenities and small town charm, which makes for a variety of experiences that one can add to their itinerary when visiting, from the types of food to outdoor adventures, national and regional entertainment that the lake area draws. But before we get started, we ask each guest a few questions to let our listeners know you a little bit better and how do you play in Louisiana's playgrounds. Are you ready? I am ready. Okay, Jordan, crawfish or gumbo? That's a tough one. Mm. Uh, I love crawfish, but I also love a comfort food, so I'd have to say gumbo. Good choice. What's your favorite type of gumbo? Chicken and sausage. My dad's, specifically. Yeah, the, the classic, right? Right. I feel like there's no other way to go. And we'll talk about it here in a minute, but there are lots of other ways to go. There are. The Fur and Wildlife Festival. <laughs> yes. we'll, we'll touch that in just a minute. Okay, now our next question. Poolside or beachside? 
beach side, definitely. Okay, down in Cameron, huh? Hanging out on the mm-hmm, coast? Absolutely. Toes in the sand? Not a bad place to be. All right, now our next question. Concert or comedy show? Concert. I'm a big lover of music. What's your favorite thing? What are you listening to right now? Well, I listen to a lot of like old country. Okay. It's kind of my jam. The standards. Mm-hmm. All right. And I think that's kind of a, a fun kind of segue here now into the conversation at hand where we're going to talk about, obviously, the Louisiana Fur and Wildlife and more specifically, what this last year's been like for you. You're the 64th. Louisiana Fur and Wildlife Queen, and to go on this circuit, which I don't think people necessarily realize that you do, what has this last year been like for you? It has been truly amazing. You know, there's a saying in the Fair and Festival pageant world, and that is, you have never seen Louisiana until you see it through the eyes of a Fair and Festival Queen. And in my case, that could not ring more true. I've had so many amazing opportunities to travel the state, not only promoting, you know, my festival and the industry that I represent, but also getting to experience firsthand some of the hard work that goes into, you know, our other industries around the state. Yeah, I think people think of this as you're a beauty queen and you get to wave and be in a parade and say hi to everyone, right? But there's a contract involved here. This is a job for you. There is. Yes, it is. I do have, you know, I'm required to travel around the state and visit all of these other fairs and festivals, but it's really, you know, technically a job, but it's really just a pleasure and an honor to get to do the things that I've done. I have traveled to Ponchatoula and picked strawberries. I've milked cows in Abbeville. I've toured a shrimp plant in Delcom. You know, it's truly a once in a lifetime experience. How many do you feel like you've, you've, you've gone through? A lot. <laughs> I've done a lot of awesome things with this title all I mean, year. Every weekend you're Every you're weekend, somewhere. pretty much. Yes. Which is really cool. It says a lot about what Louisiana has to offer in general for, for visitors from out of town or from out of state. There is something to do in Louisiana, unique to do in Louisiana every single weekend. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So why did you want to do this? Why why do the Fur and Wildlife Festival, why did you want to be their queen? Many people may not know this, but each year the Fur Festival honors a different industry that contributes to the people and kind of the economy of Cameron Parish. And though I've had a deep-rooted love for the Fur Festival, I always said I will only compete if the industry that they are honoring this year is the hunting and wildlife industry. Not because any of the other industries are any lesser, but because I don't have ties to them. But the hunting and wildlife industry is something that, you know, I've hunted since I was four or five. It's just something I've done my whole life, and I knew that I could represent that industry to its fullest. What do you talk to people, other, especially, I feel like, queens, uh, maybe they're not the ones to throw on their camo and go hunting, right? So you're kind of exploring a, a, or sharing knowledge of a different world for them. Right, absolutely. It's definitely very different, especially when I go to, you know, events and I talk to men and women who may not know a lot about Fair and Festival Queens. And, you know, at the surface, you might just see a pretty girl, but you might not imagine that I actively participate in the industry that I represent and that you can be a beauty queen or a pageant queen and you can hunt and fish or trap or do all the things. How do you feel like that, that this experience, the, the touring experience, and then just the representing of you as the fur and wildlife queen really make you further appreciate the state and then beyond that, make you appreciate the festival of what we have here? So as I mentioned earlier, this year has essentially given me a backstage pass to learn so much about the hard work that goes into the many industries that flourish in our state. Not only has my appreciation grown, but as has my understanding and trust that I now will only ever buy Louisiana milled rice or sugar and never eat imported shrimp. As far as my appreciation of the festivals go, before I began this journey as a Louisiana festival queen, and being from Lake Charles, you know, I only ever knew of the festivals in our area, those being the Pirate Festival, Railroad Days, and of course the Fur Festival. Now that I've spent the year traveling this state, I have learned that there are over 400 festivals here that celebrate just about any and everything you could imagine. I've seen the hard work that goes into making these festivals happen year in and year out. And, you know, it's not an easy feat. Um, and it just makes me appreciate our long standing local festivals even that much more. So let's talk about long standing festivals. Mm-hmm. Fern Wildlife is called the oldest and the coldest. It is. And 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 that is usually the case in January that it is the coldest festival we have to offer here. Um, let's talk what makes Fern Wildlife so unique. So the Fern Wildlife Festival has a lot of unique competitions. For example, we have our muskrat and nutra skinnings, we have oyster shucking, 
Um, we have duck and goose calling and our gumbo cook-off, which one year I took home second place, by the way. <gasps> Congrats. And then we also have our dog trials as well as some games and things for kids to participate in as well. Okay, let's just rewind back to muskrat and Nutra skinning. <laughs> is this something you've participated in? It is. So after I was crowned, they brought us all up on stage with my other royalty and we had the opportunity to skin a Nutra. Now for the other girls, they didn't love it that much, but obviously being a hunter, I've skinned many deer, so it wasn't kind of came natural mm -hmm. just s smaller yeah okay. and i love that the winner represents the fur louisiana fur and wildlife at the national level correct of the skinning competitions yes yes we do have a sister festival in maryland and they have their own skinning competitions that's kind of where we got our start someone who was a part of the national outdoor show is the name of it came to louisiana and said why don't we have one of these here so that's kind of how we got our start yeah so it's a real pride we, you know it's it's more than just you know buddies getting up there and competing they know that you know there, there's that next level too so mm -hmm. that is really neat i didn't i did not know that at all that's, that's pretty awesome that's pretty cool yeah so muskrat skinning trapping shooting duck and goose calling competitions. I mean, you've got it all. It truly is a great look at Sportsman's Paradise all in one weekend. Right. Absolutely. And even like the dog trials. So like, you know, your hunting dog, men's best friend, they even have a, a full trial to make sure. Here we go. How about this? Who's the top dog in town? Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's interesting because everybody's got their dog and they go hunting with them, but you don't get to necessarily show off their skills. Right. And uh, this is a chance for people to do that. And for people in Cameron Parish and the surrounding area in Louisiana, I mean, this is a big deal. It is. Hunting a very is a big way of deal. life. That is so correct. You know, it couldn't be more true. The Louisiana Fair and Wildlife Festival is a huge deal, just given the industries that we honor mean so much to Cameron Parish and the people in the surrounding area. And, you know, it wouldn't be a festival in Louisiana if you didn't have a parade. You know, they throw on the, the the 5K as well. And then, of course, musical entertainment. You know, you, you mentioned that it's a weekend. It's a weekend full of a little bit of everything, I mm -hmm. think is a good way to put it. It's very true. There's something for everyone. You know, and if your jam isn't our antique car show or the carnival or the parade or the 5K, then we have some great jams. Those being Jamie Bajron, on the Kicking Cajuns and Steel Shot, just to name a few of them. But nobody truly knows how to party like Cameron Parrish. <laughs> and uh, what's your favorite part of the party? Oh, gosh. Honestly, I like to people watch. <laughs> Is that odd to say? I just love to watch people enjoying themselves and having fun and sometimes having a little too much fun, but it's always great entertainment at the Fur Festival. You mentioned the highlighted festival was this past year. What is it for this coming year? So this coming year is kind of a double industry that we're honoring. So we are honoring both the fur trapping and the alligator industries. And the alligator industry, people don't realize is a booming business in Louisiana, and there are a ton of like regulations and rules to mm -hmm. make sure uh, to keep it booming that way. What did you, you know, in your time kind of representing, what did you kind of learn about that specific industry? Because, you know, when people get here, they're typically the first question is, oh, I want to see an alligator. So one of the most interesting things that I've learned about the alligator industry is that, you know, in years past, they were almost hunted to not necessarily extinction, but to be wiped out in Louisiana. And now we have alligator farms within which, you know, the farmers are able to raise alligators to a certain point, but then they have to release a certain percentage back into the wild to help grow the alligator population. It's one of those that I know nothing about it, uh, but it's one of those that where they do they do tags every year, right? Mm -hmm. Or you, you can, yes, there is a limit of how many, you know, they they do a great job. The Wildlife and Fisheries does of kind of regulating how many can be harvested or how many can't be harvested and kind of the seasons that go along with that. And Cameron Parish is certainly the place to see an alligator if you're uh, wanting to come to southwest Louisiana to spot one. All you have to do is drive down the highway and you'll see 20, no less. I was about to say, I don't think I've ever they're been everywhere. and didn't see one. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, they're they're right there in the waterway right alongside of the highway. And you can view them safely from the distance of your vehicle. <laughs> yes, Pintail Wildlife Trail, just while we're talking about it, is may maybe my favorite thing to do, and we used to do it a lot more than we do now. But but one of my favorite things to do, to just drive out there and, and see all the wildlife, the birds, you can see Nutra out there. We've spotted tons of alligators. Um, really cool. It is really awesome. Now, speaking of the festival, what do you feel like is the best way to enjoy yourself for a weekend? You know, obviously, People Watch is going to be one of the bullet points, right? <laughs> yes, absolutely. I would have to say try everything and do a little bit of everything that we have to offer. You know, go and taste all of the unique gumbos because there are some definitely very interesting ones that they have at the festival. 
Um, shop through our vendors, watch some of the skinny competitions, and stay for the bands. But especially if you see a girl in a fur coat with a crown on, go up and talk to her. I'm sure the new queen would love to show you around the festival. Yeah, so let's talk about the gumbo for just a second. Yeah. Um, I had the pleasure of judging that competition uh, several years ago. And tell you what, people in Cameron get real creative with their gumbos. They do. They do. I have seen... You know, Nutra Gumbo Squirrel, which surprisingly for Cameron isn't really that out there. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I've seen Frog and Hog and all of the critters. Yeah, I think the year that I did it, um, well, first of all, I thought I was judging the chicken sausage category. Number one, I'll just start there. I thought I was going to be in the basic division, um, but apparently I showed up late. So I got wild game. Mm -hmm. Okay. I was up for a challenge. And I think the first dish they put in front of me had snake and rabbit in it. Yeah. And I thought, well, you know, if there's a place to try this, (laughs) this is going to be it. And uh, yeah, quite interesting. Wasn't wasn't the worst thing I've ever had. People, they they know what they're doing. Oh, yes. I mean, if you cook it well enough, you probably wouldn't even know what's in it. Yeah. In fact, I I kept saying, like, just don't tell me (laughs) what's in it. I'm just going to taste it. Don't tell me what's in here. But it was everything was really good. Everything was delicious down there. And I love that it's just another layer of experience, right? Mm -hmm. That you're not going to get snake gumbo anywhere else. (laughs) You're not. And I think the perfect way to kind of put a bow on your run as the festival queen ends up happening not here in Louisiana, right? Uh January 1st, Louisiana will, for the third year in a row, have a float at the Rose Parade, which, awesome enough, Louisiana won one of the categories last year, funny enough, uh, with the Rose Parade. But you will be on the float in the Rose Parade, broadcasted worldwide uh, on January 1st. What do you expect that experience to be like? I will. I'm so, so honored and so excited. And first off, I have to send out a thank you to the Cameron Parish Tax Assessor, Mr. Scott Laverne. He is the one who made this all possible. But as for the experience, the only word I can come up with is unimaginable, I think. You know, I've spent a phenomenal year representing the Fur and Wildlife Festival on a local level and traveling the state, and it's been amazing. But to imagine being able to represent on the Louisiana float, in the Rose Parade, on New Year's Day, you know, in Pasadena, California, of all places, it's just going to be amazing. So your your reign is coming to an end. So in January, right before the festival starts, just a couple days before, right that week, um, you'll be passing on your title uh, to to the to the next girl, right? I will. I will. What's that like? Knowing that that you've had such an amazing year, and now you get to kind of share that with someone else. It's bittersweet. Obviously, I don't ever want to give it up. You know, if I could travel forever as the fur queen, I would. But I am excited for the experience for, you know, a new queen to take over and to hopefully have as much fun, if not more than I've had and the experiences that I've I've had. And I'd say my my last question with that is uh, after your experience as a festival queen and really kind of becoming not only an ambassador for your local festival, but kind of statewide after seeing a lot of the other ways that Louisiana celebrates our heritage, right? Our culture, every little thing that we do, there's a celebration for it here in Louisiana. Why do you feel like this experience is one that is important for the next group, the next generation, 10, 15 years from now to continue having these festival queens and continuing this experience? Why do you feel like that's important to build these ambassadors for Louisiana? I think it's extremely important because essentially we are the future of, you know, Louisiana's fairs and festivals. And I think I've seen so many queens who have amazing ideas and who have so much to offer to their fairs and festivals. And more often than not, queens will join the board later on to, you know, have even more of a hand in just making the festival happen year round. Yeah. You guys are, are, are going on. You're, you're not just wearing the crown for a year, then handing it over and moving on with your life. Right. You guys are actually shaping what's next as far as these fairs and festivals that Louisiana has to offer. Mm-hmm. Being a queen is such a small part, but what comes after is really the best. Thanks again to Jordan for joining us here on the show. And thank you for taking time out of your day to join us on the podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please follow the podcast, press that little plus button. And while you're there, leave us a rating and a review. We really appreciate it. This helps us grow our audience and further share the unique experiences Lake Charles in Southwest Louisiana has to offer. You can go to visitlakecharles.org slash podcast 
for more episodes, where to eat, and events happening this weekend. I'm Jillian Quarter. And I'm Brady Reynard. Thanks again for coming play on Louisiana's Playground. See you.